All right. Hello, everyone. Aga here with the Candida Cleanser. And today I'm joined with a dear sister of mine, Alyssa, who we met. Um, we met actually this past September. Yeah. And you originally contacted me about uh, Combo, actually, which mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super excited to share a little bit about that later in the video, um, because it's something that I don't talk about often in the community, but I would like to start mm -hmm. to introduce it because it's, it is such a powerful um, medicine for overall health and also candida. So um, yeah, um, Alyssa came out and, you know, gave me a ring, said, hey, I'm interested. I, I know I have candida and I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for this. And um, yeah, it's, it's been such a pleasure to, to see you to transform. And I'm really grateful that you're on the call here today to share your journey. Um, you know, I've seen you on, on Instagram. So uh, you're also a model, a beautiful model and a really talented photographer. And I've um, really appreciated how honest you, honestly, you show up on the social media platform, right? I know you've been struggling with your, your health and you, you kind of, you make it a, what, like um, public, you know, you don't hide your struggle. And it's so like, it's such a breath of fresh air when people do that on their social media because often you know we, we plaster perfection and, and and that intimidates everybody but when you were able to re be really vulnerable with our journey it's, it's so inspiring so um thank you for being such a courageous public public figure oh thank you that means a lot i really really appreciate that i think social media can be an interesting topic on its own but yeah i try to use it as a place just to be truthful and as I can and you know because we're all in this together and I think it really helps to know that you aren't alone especially with some of the struggles that we all collectively share and there are so many so I definitely feel like there's a lot of medicine in that mm -hmm. yeah and we, we mm -hmm. you, this like tendency to hide our struggle creates isolation to uh, in our own life but then a lack of contact with other and when we can share that we come together and we're like oh my goodness me too you too what's working for you oh my gosh i'm gonna try that this is amazing and um and that's kind of like how we met when you're like i have candida and i was like oh my goodness i had it too i have this thing you're gonna, your life's gonna transform like how to come do this thing <laughs> well i mean that is kind of how i found you because you know i was telling all my friends about the fact that I have candida, if it wasn't for me telling one of my dear friends, Mishka, she was the one that told me to contact you. So, you know, that it goes to show too, just the power in sharing and being honest. And, you know, you never know someone might, who someone might recommend and then where it might lead you. And then all of a sudden your whole life has changed in a positive way. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what was going on for you in, in your life before, you know, when you were in that place of sharing and, and contacting Mishka, what was going on for you uh, mm -hmm. where you knew you had candida? What led you there to that knowing? Yeah. Um, well, I guess I might backtrack just a little bit, just to give a bit of con context probably makes the most sense. Um, yeah, I, 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 I believe where it all started for me uh, definitely was going through a pretty tragic, um, traumatic experience. Um, I lost my boyfriend at the time and two friends in a tragic accident, um, which was extremely unexpected and shocking. And I'm sure, as you can imagine, it turned my life completely upside down. And my nervous system was completely shot. And I believe that's where a lot of um, some of these like ailments developed. Um, one, I, I didn't take time probably for a year to actually like heal and address even the emotional component of grief. Um, I was just trying to manage all these fight or flight symptoms that got kicked up. Um, and I guess someone called them PTSD. Um, so that year after the accident was, I believe, when the candida started to develop and I didn't know it at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, oh, that's exactly what happened. Um, yeah, so, you know, my energy levels were completely shot. I was tired all the time and probably a result of my nervous system being either shut down or hyper aroused. So either completely shut down or in a state of activation, which completely fries I believe the immune system. Mm -hmm. I'm not a somatic um, expert, but that's my understanding. And I believe candida is 
connected to the immune system, right? Is that is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I I don't didn't have a doctor look into this for me, but I'm assuming that's what happened, um, where my continue developed, and you know then I got into a long term relationship and. Um, my sex life was getting affected by it, like, you know, painful sex, my um, sexually feeling shut down, not feeling aroused. And I mean, that was really challenging. So there were some very like obvious, like, wow, like I absolutely have candida. And then also realizing, oh, it's affecting my energy levels and even like my PTSD symptoms. Um, so I feel like hopefully this is all making sense. There's just so many things that were kind of happening at once. And I do believe everything was connected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I believe like perhaps the candida was the physical manifestation of all these things I hadn't been addressing as well. I'm curious what some of the, your PTSD symptoms were. Um, so for me, it was being highly my, so my nervous system responding automatically to things that were um, a threat that in reality weren't actually a threat. So I'm going to try, I'm, I might just have to make something up because I can't think of anything off my head, but uh, I, think, I think you mentioned something about elevators once we were like going into an elevator. Oh, actually that was when I was in an elevator and that was the moment I realized I had no activation in my system. So that was like an after effect of, I just have that memory of stepping in the elevator and being like, Oh, I feel really peaceful after the fact after your nice journey mm. um yeah just one is like you know uh maybe not hearing back from my boyfriend um when I thought I was supposed to hear back from him or something and then my whole system going into like this crazy response like oh maybe he died and I guess it you know makes sense from what I went through but you know I just was not able to get a handle on what was real and what was from my past or my just nervous system was constantly reacting automatically and I had no room between that response time to actually like get grounded in what's actually happening mm -hmm. um yeah so various things like that or you know in social situations um I would just get really triggered like maybe thinking someone's mad at me or um, it's just like I was very vigilant and always scanning for threats in all different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think, you know, my system obviously just like wasn't well <laughs> um, and all fronts. Um, and then mentally, you know, just constantly thought spinning, um, intrusive thoughts, um, you know, you know, my brain going into loops about things like, you know, so my mental health was definitely struggling as well very much mm -hmm. um and this is probably for like two years i would say 2019 2020 all right and did you have any physical symptoms or was it mostly mental well i would say energetically like looking back i can now see that like i was exhausted but when i was in it like i I was just in it. So I don't think I was realizing actually how fried I was, but extreme exhaustion for mm -hmm. sure. Um, uh, painful sex, definitely. I would say those two symptoms were probably the most obvious, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say. And then yeah. was there skin issues as well? Yes. Well, I've had psoriasis since, uh, psoriasis since I was 23. Mm. Um, I had a big flare up from uh, getting really sick. So I have had that for a really long time. Um, so I, 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 you know, I had that, um, before the candida, but I mean, there's also a chance that I've had candida this whole time mm. since I was young and then balance. Um, yeah, I, I do still have um, psoriasis, but it, it is all the big spots are actually starting to slowly disappear. So it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a connection between like skin conditions um, and fungal infections. And, you know, if you've had it your whole life, it could have been this like underlining infection that masquerades as psoriasis or eczema. And then, yeah, it takes mm. a high stress to just like break. Mm. And then, mm -hmm. then the, the, the candida, 
it's like you said, the stress is so intense that your immune system shuts completely shuts down, right? You're constantly mm-hmm. in fight or flight and hypervigilant. And, you know, we rest and heal in rest and digest when we're in the parasympathetic nervous system. And if you don't have access to that, right, your body is just, it's like constantly being on the battlefield, right? Without the soldiers coming home <laughs> to, to rest and have some, you know, nourishment so yeah being in that state the nervous system gets fried the immune system is overwhelmed and then those you know pathogenic they're called opportunistic bacteria that are in our body uh, fungus viruses like we have so many bacteria and or not even bacteria but like microbes that are opportunistic and when we're weak they can invade and take over the host um, and so yeah a lot of people don't don't know that candida can be stress it can be related to stress. You can have the most perfect diet, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, it's not just mm-hmm. the sugar in your diet or the toxins in your diet. It can be very much an emotional thing or, you know, even an invasive surgery, right? That's, that's stress too. And so it, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess I should, I just had a thought pop in, but I, I also was like drinking alcohol a ton in uh, 2018, 2019 to, um, you know, I just to deal with the grief I couldn't um, deal with on my own. I didn't have the capacity yet. And I think that was probably, you know, mixed in there as well. The like copious amounts of, um, you know, sugar, I guess that was then going into my system. Yeah. The sugar probably didn't help. The stress. (laughs) Right. all of it yeah yeah you know if you're taking painkillers or birth control like there's so many factors to it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah cool well um before we get into like what your journey was like with the cleanse I, let's hear like what yeah. you are now like what mm-hmm. for you i know i remember um this moment where you came um to pick up another bottle of the cleanse after your first round and on the way out you were just glowing and you said something mm-hmm. like like it feels like I'm living for the first time and, and it's like skipped away <laughs> oh, yeah well man there's like a lot of truth to that um in so many ways yeah um yeah it's nice to go backwards because it almost maybe feels like a movie or something like oh my god like it really was I really was struggling so hard back then like you know wow um yeah, I, I didn't almost think it was possible to feel as good as I feel now when I was in it for so long. So, and now, and now kind of experiencing that is like my everyday. It's like, it just feels like a dream. And that being not feeling those like PTSD symptoms daily, because I used to wake up and like always be triggered by something. And that could just be a thought in my mind. So that's connected to, yeah, I don't have intrusive thoughts, swirling, you know, worst case scenario, um, stuck in a loop every single day, I just wake up and I have peace or I'm just, you know, more in flow and I'm not so um, stuck in that like hypervigilant state. And like, let me tell you, like that is worth all the money in the world. Like, you know, I probably would have given I didn't have a lot of money a few years ago, but like, I don't know, I just would have given an arm just to experience that peaceful state of mind. So like that truly is like living, oh my God, from where I was at. <laughs> like, oh, this is great. You know, this is amazing. Um, yeah, and you know, it's interesting because I think, um, I don't want to jump ahead, but i um, getting off coffee. Um, which was like pre combo and just sticking to that. I think there's some really big connector for their connector as well, because I think coffee was really boosting my cortisol levels in ways I didn't realize stress hormones. You and I talked about that. So I've been off coffee since September and I do just feel this like peaceful state that I just did not have access to before. Um, I hope that answered my question. I feel like I'm kind of talking in circles, but I guess there just really is a lot to say. Um, yeah, well, to, to reflect back, what I heard is that the PTS symptoms are gone. You're not hypervigilant anymore. So what that means is you have access to peace and flow states and um, stability. And also there's more space between like reaction times. Things don't trigger you anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And also, um, yeah, 
um, that when you mentioned previously the the skin also clearing up a bit so the big patches are gone now it's just like uh, the the smaller smaller patches mm -hmm. um i should add so i did um i just to um add clarity like i do i obviously still feel maybe a trigger but like my capacity to handle it and for my body to come back into um kind of a state of balance is like way faster instead of taking five days it maybe takes like an hour or 20 minutes or 30 minutes right so I, yeah i mean that's huge um and uh yeah my the big patches that were like relentless on my body are they are starting to fade which is like really cool <laughs> like then they've been on they the, those patches have been in my body for probably two years like just the same ones like not moving so yeah that's big yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah oh yes and yeah it's very exciting like um like emotionally what what goes on like when you know when we have skin issues obviously and you didn't say this i don't want to put words in your mouth but for me it's like i get so insecure when i have like a blemish or you know i get cold sores sometimes and i can imagine like what having these big like itchy blotches all over your body and all of like what that did emotionally and then now coming into that where like the skin, skin is clearing up and like how how does it feel to be in your skin mm -hmm. um yeah it's something i've dealt with for a very long time i mean majority of my 20s i had um psoriasis and it really affected my self-worth um in a very major way, especially being like a model. And, um, you know, I definitely maybe didn't even lean into modeling as much as I maybe would have for, um, you know, my security and relationships, uh, security, just showing up in the world as a human, all got really impacted. So, um, you know, it definitely has been a journey and how do I cultivate that? And, and if maybe if I don't feel it all the time, but now as I'm watching things shift and, and the patch is starting to heal, um yeah i just feel this sense of like level uh levity and hopefulness and oh wow like you know healing is possible and things do get better and like i can have everything i want and wow like you know just the, maybe um possibilities start has start to open up in a new way mm -hmm. um and there is something about i think the feeling of just feeling hope which is like really powerful of oh wow like and it is possible like change healing growth can happen and especially when i've had so many doctors western doctors say you know i'll have psoriasis that um you're just stuck with it that this is your whatever for the rest of your life you're always going to have it so i think to actually see changes is i mean it just break breaks that story or that narrative that uh I really wish doctors didn't say that to people with skin conditions because what I'm learning is you they can go into remission, you can heal, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the power of a diagnosis is huge. There's you know studies done mm -hmm. of, I don't know, it's not a study, but there was this doctor who you know was working with cancer patients and he would open up their file and regardless of what it had, he'd be like, oh wow, you're in remission, like this is great, you don't have cancer anymore, and all of a sudden the people's cancer just started to clear up oh and there was this one case where a doctor like had a, the wrong file for somebody and was like oh yeah you have cancer and the guy was like what and then he died of cancer like six months later and but they looked at his file and the guy actually the doctor picked up the wrong file what so, yeah, <laughs> we give our power away to our doctors and like they're what they say is word or, or God's word, but it's not, it's not true. Mm -hmm. It's so not true. Um, there is, there are solutions and, and, wow. you know, to really be careful with what your diagnosis is and then not to um, fully believe it. Like you just mm -hmm. said, transformation is possible. And it's so beautiful when you're living in the evidence of that, like to have hope again, like, cause I too have been on the floor in, in a health crisis and mm -hmm. the hopelessness is almost like one of the worst feelings ever. Hope, hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's it, it's a dark hole right that just spirals mm -hmm. and to then be on mm -hmm. the other end of that is like yeah skipping mm -hmm. around <laughs> like, yeah um yeah and you know i think there is something interesting because you know, there's some like lifestyle changes that i've made right like I, right now i'm not drinking alcohol or drinking coffee and 
you know, it, it's interesting because I still have my moments where actually maybe I actually feel sad because I can't have a glass of wine. Well, because I'm choosing not to have a glass of wine or craving that cup of coffee in the morning. But there is something else cool that's happening. Whereas I'm just in those moments that maybe tuning into actually how I'm feeling as a result of all the healing. And that is actually overpowering that need for something that used to give me comfort. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, like it still comes up, but to just feel the power of like what I'm doing for my body now is, is actually tr- propelling me forward so much that I'm not going towards old habitual things is really cool. Um, Cause I maybe didn't, I don't know if I've ever really had access to to that choice before it was maybe like, oh, okay, I'll just have a glass of wine or just one or going back to those old things. Right. Yeah. You just really hit a, a powerful point <laughs> of, of choice is having a choice finally, where before in that, in that place of total disempowerment, there's no choice. And you I mentioned like your reaction time. It's like, there was no space to be able to react in the way you choose. And now like there's spaciousness between you and and, and how you uh, interact with life so yes weird, you know to have choice yes yes um well and and on that note actually something that I started doing um I think around the time we did combo right after is I actually started I have just like a nine minute meditation practice I do every morning which is um brand new um you know I I'm 31 and it's like, I've just started to meditate, um, regularly. And there's something really big there where just sitting with myself and breathing for nine minutes every morning has also added to having that space to choose. It, 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 it um, is building my capacity for space. And yeah, I think I started that right after our third combo ceremony was, uh, I started to feel like I had access to like be in my skin and like be in my body and actually sit and be able to sit with just my breath. So that was interesting, really great as well. Yeah, such big shifts. And um, yeah, what we're, we're touching on now is like creating new habits that support this way of, of being because we get sick and then the habits that um, we create during sick when we're sick, it's like they dig that hole deeper and deeper, right? So being exhausted. So then reaching for coffee every morning, like there is no choice because you're so exhausted. So there's that loop, right? And then Mm -hmm. to to alcohol, and then there's an addiction to cortisol, right? If we, if we had a stressful, you know, childhood, for example, we will seek stressful life experiences to, to feed those, um, like, uh, what's it called? cell receptors, because they need their Mm. cortisol. So we, we will, if even though we're in peace, we will, thought spiral into creating more cortisol right and so like we create all these neural pathways and habits that you know hold the dis-ease in our body and to break Mm. free from that right it is like you know a spiritual journey we're reclaiming our sovereignty our free will and our choice from like that muck and that heaviness right and once we're clear of candida and we can act, we can harness that free will. It becomes easier to create the the new neural pathways, the new habits that foster well being. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm having just flashbacks of you sharing that. I think after our third camp, Campbell summary, when we're talking about the cleanse and everything, and and now I'm seeing like, oh yeah, I am doing what you said I should do, which is, <laughs> I'm like, cool. I listened to you. Uh, is creating those new pathways and new habits to support. Also, um, I remember you saying like, what are you going to then fill that spaciousness with that you create as a result of, you know, ridding your body of the toxins and the inflammation and the candida. So I'm like, oh, I really see that. Like, and and there is something to actually like, I, I, I kind of set daily things for me to do every day. And, and now as I, they're more of a habit, it's like, I allow myself more flow, but I, I did need to kind of set things to do every single day to get me um, building those more positive habits and like filling my life with things that were going to support me in being able to make those choices every day. Cause yeah, I do think it is kind of a daily thing to like show up for yourself and what am I choosing? And, and every day is going to feel a little different too. Some days might feel harder. So, you know, I think having those tools to deal with when maybe the, 
grief of not having a glass of wine or if you're out with friends and you know drinking so socialized and I know I keep talk, talking about alcohol but I think it's something that's just such a big part of our society and socializing that uh, it's kind of played a big part in me choosing um, not to drink and choosing a more positive way forward to just support my healing yeah mm-hmm Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and unfortunately alcohol is so normalized but it's Mm -hmm. it's a poison it's a toxin and yet you know it's so culturally accepted Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a shame Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah really so what was your process like what when you started taking the candida cleanser were you hit with some good old (laughs) (laughs) die-off um well, yeah, so I stopped drinking coffee probably, I guess it would have been two weeks before we started, I started the cleanse with you. So I have to say, I'm not sure if it was candy to die off or caffeine withdrawal or both, but um, the exhaustion was something else. Like I probably for a month would have to make sure I was home so I could like rest at around like 3, 4 p.m. Like I just noticed an insane crash around that time, which makes me wonder maybe it was the caffeine, maybe the caffeine withdrawal symptoms were so massive that I couldn't even feel the die off. Um, But that was probably the biggest um, things I was feeling was the exhaustion and needing to lie down and kind of feeling quite foggy and like out of it um, in the evenings, which is sounds like I think would would have been die off but um yeah I kind of felt like my whole body was starting to just like reset and it felt pretty wild at times um I I needed like so much rest Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember yeah Mm -hmm. before you started the cleanse I was like you might feel exhausted (laughs) (laughs) and remind yourself to take a nap rather than drink a coffee that this is part of the process and Um, people forget that right it's major major rest is one of the Mm -hmm. best best things for this process Mm -hmm. yeah I'm I'm not a napper probably because of uh, my tendency to be more anxious but um, there were a few times I would have lay down and be dozing and like that's pretty wild for me to be like dozing off during the day but yeah so that was me for probably a month um, straight like every day Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so that was really real <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I imagine it's it was probably a factor of both of, of yeah the the cleanse and then die off and then you know the body not having caffeine to ri- rely on energy but also zapped adrenals like when you um are masking adrenal fatigue with coffee and you get off all of a sudden you feel like the example is like when you have cement blocks on your feet and you're walking through molasses yeah. it's like oh my god like you have no energy um and it takes you know a while to let the system reset to let your your body create those new um hormones and then your liver to and, and adrenals to be able to mm. energy again right mm-hmm. yeah i feel like you know in many ways i'm still recovering um like i'm still on that process of rebuilding and resetting and rewiring but uh, yeah i'm, I'm i've feeling much better now than I was in that first month but um yeah absolutely I definitely felt felt that and I'm pretty lucky that I worked work from home so you know I'd just kind of be in bed like working under the covers pretty much um yeah yeah it, it, it was pretty wild yeah I don't think I'd ever really experienced that sort of level of like needing to like have almost feel like I had no choice like I need to lie down um every day mm-hmm. during the day mm-hmm. it's almost like going into your cocoon right going into a cocoon and just letting your body heal letting yourself rest and I think mm-hmm. it's it's challenging today because of the culture around massive productivity that when we rest all of a sudden guilt and shame come in and they're like hey you're not doing enough right and to, to be able just to like rest and nap and cocoon and do nothing um it's it's challenging because it's it's not what's you know approved by society Mm -hmm. yeah which is um the more you think about it more it's like oh that's just wild because I don't think 
we're meant we're necessarily designed to be in that state all the time so it's no wonder like we get these ailments or things come up you know as a result of just all the pushing and yeah. overriding yeah it's like it's the massive um veneration of productivity is like venerating a trauma response too right the, like the go go mm. um it's the fight or flight system that's on that's preventing stillness in the body because once we stop and breathe and be in the body all the emotions right all the pain all the discomfort comes up so it's a coping mechanism to just keep moving and so often mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, you know those are new to a meditation practice especially when we are in disease it's so fucking terrible part of my language to just like sit there and meditate because you're all your stuff comes up so of course it's easier to distract with some netflix or shopping or a project or a meeting right it's and to yeah, cocooning in this healing journey is very much a spiritual practice of coming back to yourself, coming back to your body, coming back to your feelings, regulating, coming back to your nervous system and regulating. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a big journey you've been on and it's really beautiful to see. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, I just realized I should, or not I should, but um, I'm wanting to mention because I didn't really touch on um, the intimacy part, but um, as well, um, the pain did go away during sex. So just wanted to touch on that because I didn't want to leave anyone hanging there, but um, that has resolved, which has been amazing, of course. Yeah. I can only imagine like the, the flowering of that relationship and the intimacy and like, and the confidence, like stepping into like your mm -hmm. sexuality mm -hmm. and your power as a woman. Yeah. I mean, it, it's wild how it's all sort of connected there. It's kind of like, it's like it affected so many aspects of my life. We're all kind of being it was all um, being affected by, you know, what my body was going through. So um, as I heal, it's like all these other aspects of my life is healing, like my sexuality uh, as well. So that's been also a big part of my journey too. Yeah. 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 We, mm -hmm. we don't realize how um, health is everything. It's connected to every aspect of our life and how we show up for ourselves in relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. um and then so during your process when you were in bed cuddled up <laughs> was there anything mm -hmm. that you were doing to that helped supported that that helped support your your healing were you drinking broth and um mm. yeah is there anything you were doing i was drinking broth i was <laughs> um i was drinking lots of i got dandelion root tea nettle tea and I was like alternating between those teas quite a bit. Um, I was taking milk thistle and um, activated charcoal every day, uh, three times a day. Um, those were the main things I was taking supplement wise to, um, that I believe were quite supportive. And um, the bone broth was really nice and nourishing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, on the other side, I was just kind of giving myself permission to give myself permission to rest. And even if that did mean watching Netflix and watching shows in bed, um, I just let that be okay. Mm -hmm. And like not needing to be journaling all the time or needing to like be meditating or, or, you know, I was just like, just the fact I was allowing myself to rest and, you know, be doing something so positive for my body, like doing the cleanser and drinking the broth, like that was almost enough. And so then just giving my body time to rejuvenate was huge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And when you're hit with that exhaustion, I often tell people like, just lay in bed, like imagine like you have the flu, right? You're not gonna be mm -hmm. going, you know, to the gym or like so rigid with your 5 a.m. yoga practice, right? If you've got the flu, it's like, it's very much that you're fighting an infection a deeply seated infection and your body needs yeah. all the energy it needs it needs so you know if you don't go to the gym that week that's fine right yeah to have a glass of water and then you know watch a show <laughs> it's okay yes um I, th that was a big thing that you said to me that like stuck um and i and i did work out a lot less i allowed myself to not do that which was helpful and tons of baths was another thing lots and lots of bathing <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Beautiful. So I'd love to introduce our, our community to Combo and speak a little bit, um, yeah, about what that is and what your experience was. Mm -hmm. 
So a little backstory on combo is it's an Amazonian frog medicine where you work with the secretion of the giant uh, green tree monkey frog um, and apply it to the skin. Um, you make little burn marks in the skin and you put the, the, um, the venom into the, onto the skin and it goes into the lymphatic system and works magic in the body. It's uh, essentially peptide therapy. So there are um, a number of peptides in there, like ad adrenoregulin, dermaseptin, all these things. And they have um, stimulate different functions in the body that boost the immune system. They destroy cancer cells. They get at fungal uh, colonies. They um, go after and develop viruses like HIV, um, tuberculosis, and what the cells do is the cells open up and purge out all their deeply seated toxins. The bile um, releases into the stomach and bile is where we hold a lot of our toxins. So on one end, it's helping to destroy pathogens in the body and help the body cleanse itself of toxins and one of the, and boost um, um, anti-inflammatory responses in the body. So it's doing three really epic things that helped to promote wellness in the body. It's getting rid of infections, secret co-infections, um, and detox the body and bring down inflammation. And, and those three things, when we're fighting candida, you know, uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we are full of toxins, we're full of pathogens, and it helps to just really ugh, dump the, the, the toxins out through a purgative effect. It's, it's you purge, you drink two liters of water beforehand in a fasted state, points go on, two, three minutes later, it starts moving through the body and you purge it out. And, um, yeah, I, this is medicine that I've been working with for the last four years and partner it with the cleanse to help people recover from candida. So, um, yeah, let's speak to that. How is, how is that for you? <laughs> um, yeah, it was one of those things when um, my girlfriend told me I should do combo because it's been known and she, she had heard it can help with candida. I was just like, yep, okay, like, you know tried so much. Um, yes. And, you know, I have worked with, um, plant medicines like ayahuasca in the past and, um, you know, what really drew me to combo is that there was no hallucin hallucin hallucinogen effect. Yeah. And that felt really important to me because, um, I do have some fear around working with medicines like this because of some of my ayahuasca journeys. Um, in the past, I just, just with where I'm personally at. So the fact that it was just all to do about the body felt really exciting to me. And I was wanting some extra help in that way. And yeah, I, I think I definitely, I don't know if it's helpful to say I was really afraid going into it, but it's the truth. I was very afraid. I didn't really know what to expect. And, um, you know, you kind of walked me through it, but it's one thing to sit with it. Um, but actually going through with the ceremony, it was really wonderful how fast the process was of, you know, the combo being inserted, the process of dumping the toxins and purging. The fact that it was over probably within like 20 minutes, it was just like, okay, wow, like I can do that again. And, you know, immediately I think, at, so it was after my first ceremony going home and going in the elevator to go up to my apartment. That was when I was standing in the elevator and just being like, no thoughts in my head, zero activation in my body and being like, holy, like I feel so peaceful. Like, is this what it's like? <laughs> is this what's possible as a human being? Like, this is wild. And yeah, that was after my first combo ceremony with you. We hadn't even done any of the cleanser. I haven't started, I haven't started the cleanse yet. So that was really interesting to me because I don't think I've felt that in years, honestly, that amount of internal peace. Um, and like, maybe I didn't even know if I had a full understanding of why that was yet. But when I came to you the next day and explained that to you, you did tell me that Cambo, it's not scientifically proven, but Cambo is known to help with like PTSD symptoms, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it helps to discharge trapped energy in the nervous system. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I call yeah. it 
I call it the energetic transmuter, right? It's an energetic medicine, um, mainstream, not almost like mainstream, but allopathic approach to things, wants things to be scientific and FDA approved and, you know, where are the mm-hmm. studies? Right. And so they're like studying the the um, the peptides. Right. Oh, this peptide, it does this thing and this peptide, it does this thing. But it's completely disconnected from the energetic and the emotional component to reality. And you mm. know, we the physical vessel, it's it's just like the tip of the iceberg. Right. What we what we most people um, look at. But when we look at the un- energetic components and what PTSD, it's like trapped energy, trapped emotion. It's mm. a nervous system that's stuck in like, ah, I'm going to fight you for my life. And when we can, you know, shut that response off, release some of the emotions um, like that, um, the, the really high voltage energy of like a fear response in the body, when mm-hmm, we can mm-hmm. that energetically, you can transmute it. Um, like, and that's what combo is. It's a transmuter. It goes in what energy is stuck. Let's transmute that through a purge through vomiting or shaking or crying or, um, sweating, right. Energy in movement. It just helps energy move. That's been stuck. And then when that Mm -hmm. energy moves, all of a sudden you come back to yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regulated nervous system. And that's where peace is. That's where creativity is. That's where flow is. That's where you, your true essence really resides and what we're all trying to get back to. Um, mm-hmm. for all these painful human experiences, right. That have us just like mm-hmm. on guard. Um, so yeah, it, combo helps with the physical purge, releasing the toxins. And we feel so much better when we don't have those toxins polluting the body, the vessel, but also like energetically this, like that has been released and you can come back to, yeah, like that, that peace and that calm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause we did two back-to-back sessions, then one in a week and yeah, I, honestly, that was like something else for me, like um, for that aspect, like feeling the amount, yeah, I guess really feeling the energy that had been moved um, as a result of those ceremonies. Um, it's almost like a, there was before combo and then like after combo and after my combo ceremonies and going on to the cleanser things have just felt really radically different um, in all the areas we already t- I've talked about. But um, yeah, it honestly blew me away. Like I was not, expecting that I thought it was you know I was just trying to get rid of the candida but having you know that other very extremely positive side effect was huge because it affects my entire well-being in every waking moment of my life Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it's one of those things where it's like you do the ceremony and then um you know you're showing up to the next ceremony you're like ah am I gonna do this again and so I, you know, I sat with you three times and I have to say, like, I want to do more, you know, like, yes, of course it, it is hard work. It's, it's hard work. And, but the amount of positive, like positive positivity that came through as a result, like I do want to keep showing up. Mm. Um, I really see the benefits. It mm-hmm. totally outweighs the pain. And even, you know, the ceremonies are relatively short, like, nice I feel like it's like a really good like point (laughs) selling point yeah Yeah. your your time in the process of is about 20 minutes 20 20 to 30 minutes and something I probably forgot to mention is that you know you have the points on the medicine starts working and it's uncomfortable right it's at first it's Mm -hmm. like this heat comes on your heart starts to pound a bit faster and kind of the thoughts are like holy shit I'm gonna die (laughs) what's going on you're losing control of like your bodily functions then the cramps kind of start to kick in or the nausea and the nausea is just like building slowly and you're just like so uncomfortable it's like a, a case of bad like food poisoning sometimes you get really hot or really cold or you have to go to the bathroom at the same time as you have to vomit um, you get dizzy, you get like lightheaded, you, right? So it's just all of a sudden, all these really uncomfortable sensations hit, there's a purge and all of a sudden whew, everything normalizes and you feel fantastic. Um, <laughs> and it's 20 minutes of pure discomfort. Um, and so it's a wonderful teacher that teaches us how to sit with our discomfort, right? Like earlier I was saying, like, we are so busy bodied that we do anything to not feel, discom- no, not feel uncomfortable. Um, so it really forces us to be with that um, and showing us that there's benefit to feeling that because then it moves through mm-hmm. and there's, there's peace on the other side. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I've I feel like I'm pretty sure I've recommended like you uh, combo and the Kennedy cleanser to like anyone that will like listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because when you find these tools that work, right, that finally work after years of suffering, of course, like you want to shout it from the mountaintops, like yeah. you need to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, one of my good friends, I believe, like, yeah, she did sit with you, um, sit, did combo with you as my recommendation. And yeah, I mean, she had the same experience, like just um, extremely healing um, with everything she's been going through. So yeah, it's just really cool, I think, to hear, um, you know, about other people's journeys too, and be like, yeah, like there is something really here um, with this medicine. Mm -hmm. That's extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's you know another reason why we we I don't want to say say should, but the benefit of sharing your story and process is to share these resources and share these tools because there's so much available, um, and we don't need to suffer, right? Mm -hmm, alternative mm -hmm. ways to healing outside of the mainstream um if you're just a little uh more open and yeah ready to receive it so for those of you who are listening um if this is resonating or like huh interesting you know i, I encourage you to look into it start doing the research um because combo is one of those things that um actually a dear friend of mine she had been suffering from lyme's disease for for years she was actually like bedridden I think for about six years and she did combo and within like three sessions she was out of bed all her pain was wow. gone um, she's like I'm going to study this and now yeah. um, she attracts a lot of people with um, things like MS and Lyme's disease um, it, these conditions that the allopathic um, system is like like you know like you your doctor hey, you're gonna have this forever I don't know what to do because a lot of these, these things are, 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 are complicated in the body, right? There's, there's co-infections and there's stress and there's trapped emotion. There's an energetic component, right? And combo kind of just addresses a lot of those things, the physical, the mm -hmm. emotional, the energetic, um, and the peptides are really powerful. It's peptide therapy. Um, so if you're someone who's struggling with unknown conditions, that the doctors can't figure out. And, you know, a lot of people come to us 10 years down the road, you know, to all the doctors, all the natural paths, all the supplements, nothing's working. And then they find the cleanse and they're like, oh, oh, here's the answer, right? Um, combo is one of those things too. Like if you tried all the things, nothing's working. It's like, consider this, consider this. It, it's really powerful. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, on that note, like, you know, I had done um, antibiotics, um, I was then working with a homeopath for a year and like nothing was working. I worked with two different homeopaths. And then that was like right before I started working with you. And like, honestly, like I'm not just saying this, but like the combo and the candida cleanser is what worked. Like nothing else I tried, I changed my diet. I did this, I did that. And yeah, this is the only thing I've found that has worked, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah like it's amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I do I do want to come back for more combo which is crazy I feel like you know maybe right after ceremony you're like I'm never doing that again but I'm like no I'd absolutely do that again so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not being too real I don't this is just my process with it no. yeah <laughs> I, I love real this is great okay right. yeah. to be real yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Uh, oh. I'm sure there's many people out there who are going to listen and it, it'll be that maybe that last push they needed to hear to, to make the decision to, to do this cleanse or to um, even just begin researching Candida because it's very un, under, um, what's the word? Doctors don't talk about it. People don't talk about it, but it's a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, thank you for inviting me to share. And yeah, it was absolutely my pleasure to be able to share as openly and honestly and truthfully as I can. So mm -hmm. yeah, I hope it was helpful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, those of you who are listening who want to check out um, your photography or your modeling, I know you can be found oh. on Instagram. Uh, I think Alyssa.Hanson. I'll put it in underneath. Yeah, you, you got it pick you out give you a light <laughs> oh uh, thanks see how you how you're blossoming on your journey and your health 
Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.